OK, this is just a quick video to show you the behaviors of the Hantac 2D72 and O1HDS 272S when measuring slow varying signals using slow time basis. I did a pretty thorough comparison between these two scope meters in my last video, but no matter how comprehensive I wanted the comparison to be, there is always going to be areas I could have missed due to time constraint of the video. This question was brought up by one of my viewers, and I thought this warrants a quick follow-up video. Now, I personally don't work with subhertz slow varying signals that often, but it could be important for those who do. So let's take a look at the behaviors of these two meters. What I'm currently showing is a 1 hertz signal, and as you can see here, the horizontals for both of the time bases are set at 500 milliseconds per division. As you can see, both meters are able to display this signal with no problem. What you'll probably have noticed immediately is that O1 is currently in roll mode, and the hand tag is in triggered mode. This is because on the O1, there is actually no way of triggering a signal once the time base slows down to above 50 milliseconds. So you simply do not get a choice. You are automatically put into the roll mode. Whereas with the hand tag, you do have the ability to put in either the trigger mode or the roll mode. So let me quickly demonstrate this behavior. On the O1, let's uh, change the horizontals. Let me reduce the time base. 200 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, and you can see that we're still doing this uh, roll mode here. And as soon as I change it to 50 milliseconds, you'll see that now the signal gets uh, properly triggered. So clearly, between the 50 milliseconds and uh, any time base above that, that's where you started seeing this mode switched between the roll mode and trigger mode. So that is something very unique to this O1 meter, and there's no way for you to manually control that. Now let's take a look at the hand tag. I can also change the time base by press time, and right now the mode is set to YT is triggered on the Y axis, so I can change it to roll mode. Now interestingly though, the I did not change the time base, but it automatically changed to 100 milliseconds, so clearly there's some firmware issue there. But nevertheless, you get an idea. We can change between the roll mode and the trigger mode. So let me change it back. For that, I'm going to press time again, and I can change it back to trigger mode. At 1 hertz, you can see that the hand tag is triggered properly, but the update rate is actually very slow. And that is because the horizontal is currently set at 500 milliseconds per division. And depends on the depth of acquisition, it actually takes more time to acquire the signal than the 6 seconds required to scan the 12 horizontal divisions. And of course now you can see the time base again switch back to 500 milliseconds without me changing the time base physically. So there's clearly some firmware implementation issue. And also you can see both channels are enabled, although originally we only had channel 1 enabled. So we can go there and uh, turn off channel 2. No big deal. Of course, when you turn off channel 2, the whole signal is uh, being reacquired again. So that can take quite some time for that signal to be triggered again. So that's actually some inherent problem when using slow time basis. Now let me reduce the input frequency. Let's uh, reduce it to 500 millihertz, which is uh, 0.5 hertz. Now you can see that on our O1HDS272S, the signal is immediately changed. That's because this is in roll mode. Any change is uh, reflected instantaneously. Whereas on the hand tag, we have to wait for the a trigger to capture that frame of data. And it, so far it hasn't uh, finished doing that just yet. And uh, now we uh, actually captured that uh, 0.5 hertz signal. Now the hand tag actually is doing a great job triggering on that 500 millihertz signal. Not sure if you just saw that, but every single time when we re-trigger, the signal shifts a little bit. And that is because the triggering point is uh, ever so slightly different on each of the scans. But nevertheless, it is triggered properly on this scope. It is actually not that uncommon for digital scopes to have issues triggering on these very slow varying signals which is not really a problem when you think about it. For these kind of signals, triggering on them becomes less important. It is probably better to set the scope in roll mode anyway, so that you can see the amplitude changes in real time. And as a digital scope, you can always just uh, pause the acquisition, so if you wanted to do some measurements. 
That's probably why O1 automatically switches to roll mode as soon as you increase the time base above 15 milliseconds. By the way, at this low frequency, it is also important to use DC coupling instead of AC coupling, as typically the lowest frequency you can go is at around 10 to 20 hertz for AC coupling, depending on the scope you are using. Another issue brought up by some viewers is that when using slow time base, the sampling rate actually drops. You can see it here at 500 milliseconds per division. The actual sampling rate is at 500 samples per second for this O1 oscilloscope. Now, believe it or not, this is actually quite normal and is directly related to the memory depth of these oscilloscopes. The O1 scope has a memory depth of 8K. So if you do the calculation, Given the 12 horizontal divisions, the maximum samples you can get is 666 per division. And it depends on the implementation, for instance, how much off-screen buffer is allocated. The 500 samples per second figure that is given here is certainly in the ballpark. And for the hand tag, the samples per second figure, although not published, should be lower than that, given it only has 6K in memory depth compared to the 8K for the O1. We can see that in this setup, right now I have the UTG962E waveform generator outputting a 1 Hz pulse signal with a duty cycle of 0.25%. For the time being, you can see that this signal is captured by both of these scopes, with the hand tag in triggered mode and the O1 in roll mode, as we previously discussed. And if I start to reduce the signal duty cycle, you will see that at some point, the hand tag will no longer be able to trigger on a signal due to the limited sampling rate. So that is roughly at 0.2%. Yep, now it's gone. And of course, if I further reduce the duty cycle, then at some point you will lose that signal on the O1 as well. So for example, right now we're at 0.05. You can see that the signal is gone from the O1 as well. So that sampling rate limitation is a direct correlation with the memory depth of these scopes. So neither of these scopes are suitable for measuring short pulses with rare occurrence rate. In more advanced scopes, they are segmented memory and that is specifically designed for this kind of infrequent event. As always, hope you liked the video and I will see you next time.